Welcome back! It's time for another video and this one is about my very first silver collection. I have finished up my very first sellable silver collection and I'm super excited and I'm gonna show you it. For anyone new to the channel, you know that I have spent this entire year basically learning how to silversmith. It's been a very, very long and slow process. It's probably been one of the best and most fun learning experiences I have encountered. So I thought I would be selling silver jewelry by springtime or late springtime or summertime. That was not the case. It's late September and I am just putting out my very first silver collection. This video will be going up in October though. So it had taken a lot longer than I realized to really learn this craft at a level where I was satisfied with the jewelry to the point that I can say I made something and that it is sellable now because I really don't want to sell something that may fall apart or isn't well made in my eyes. Since these are all handcrafted pieces, obviously there might be some minor flaws and things of that nature, but nothing that would actually impact the durability of a piece. And I think those little tiny flaws sometimes that just add to the handcrafted character of each piece. So I have learned how to silversmith mostly from YouTube tutorials and just researching stuff online and watching other silversmiths and being inspired by their work. It's been quite a long, long journey to kind of get to from where I started to where I am now. I'm gonna link a video that shows my progress that I made and this was probably about two or three pieces before making this collection. So seeing where I started and spent the entire year learning and what I was able to make in the beginning compared to what I am able to make now is seriously crazy. Uh, I didn't think I could make what I could make now, especially when I started in the beginning, it was quite frustrating. So now that I have made five pieces that I'm gonna show you today, that is part of the Hallows collection. These are the first five that I'm actually gonna be listing in my Etsy shop to sell, and they should all be available by the time this video goes up if they don't sell out. So one of the biggest learning curves here, I think, was, was that I was expecting to be able to churn out jewelry the way I am with electroformed pieces where I can make collections of 10 to 20 pieces and I can make them pretty quick. I can usually finish an entire collection in a week if I'm like super focused. I was trying to do that with silver. That doesn't work. It doesn't work very well. Silver, one is a lot more expensive so you screw up. You are losing money on each little piece of silver that you screw up um, but it is also a vastly different material to work with than copper and clay and what I was doing before. So I had to learn the hard way that I can't rush the process and I have to slow down, like immensely slow down. I screwed up a couple pieces, had a couple failed projects because I was trying to be able to work at the speed that I'm used to. I can't do that, at least not yet. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like now that I have spent two weeks working on five pieces of jewelry. For me, two weeks, that's basically four days each week. I have a full-time job where I work three days. So a business Etsy work week is only consists of four days, still about 10 hours a day. But that includes all the other Etsy stuff, like my laser side of the business, the Glowforge, the shipping, the admin stuff, and the YouTube part. So that does impact my time that I have to work on jewelry as well. But I did spend a lot of time working on the silver jewelry and what I decided not to do this time was not film. When I did film a lot of pieces, I, when I filmed the process, it could take me two or three days just to finish one piece because of the filming aspect and moving the cameras around, getting different shots. And while it's fun, I wanted to fully focus in on what I was doing focus in on just the jewelry and the creative process and enjoy it, not have to worry about filming it. That's why I'm doing a filming of it right now so you can still see what I've made and the progress. I gotta say, working on just five pieces, which is a very small collection for me, over the two week time frame, I found that in the beginning, I'm like, this is not working now. I'm trying to go above my current skill level. And I was very, very tempted to simplify it multiple times, but I did not, I kept persevering. And it was one of those heavy trust the process moments because at one point I'm like these are not gonna be sellable they are not gonna be sellable they're not gonna look good or they're not even I'm gonna crack the stones or something seeing this collection finally just come to life is probably one of the best feelings when I have all five pieces made of silver all set with their stones and they're like durable and created in a way that I know this isn't going to fall apart this is an actual piece of silver jewelry which is kind of amazing
for my very first silver collection, I wanted to focus on a few main things. One was just kind of pulling together all the different skills that I've learned, trying to combine them in all different ways to really practice all the stuff that I learned and see that can I really do it? Two was creating a themed collection. So I'm a big fan of the themed collections and with spooky season coming right up and all the Halloween things showing up in stores and everything, I wanted to do something Halloween-y. And number three was just fully committing to the process from start to finish, not letting myself get frustrated and giving up or scrapping a piece because it wasn't coming out how I wanted to. That happens sometimes. As creatives, you start getting very, very critical of your own work and then you scrap it because you think it's not going to come out good. So the hardest part for me was creating this collection and designing it and setting it up. While I was in like the sketching and design phase, I had so many ideas, especially with Halloween being one of my like favorite holidays and all the different like motifs and things that you could use in Halloween design. I just had so many ideas and I was seeing a lot of jewelers put, at, put out a lot of really cool things that was inspiring me in my own work. The design phase took a while. It was the hardest because I wanted, I had probably 10 to 15 different designs and I knew that I would never be able to finish 10 to 15 different pieces and release them before Halloween. That was not happening. So what I did was decide I'm gonna do five pieces. I'm gonna do a set of earrings, two necklaces, and two rings. And then from there that's when I started shifting through all my crystals and picking out what I wanted to use. And I tried to go with a variety of gemstones. So I went with some smaller ones to give myself a little bit more of a challenge. Sometimes working on a smaller scale and setting a smaller gemstone is a lot harder than it looks. And also some bigger ones that were oddly shaped too. I used kite cabochon, a coffin shaped one, two round ones, and then a rectangular one. But the rectangular one had a weird shape that gave its own difficulty. Now the types of designs that I picked were ones that would specifically give me practice in a wide variety of skill sets. So I picked things that I would have to saw out, solder, um, especially like sweat soldering, not just regular like joint solder, making bezel cups, forming metal, and even a little bit of engraving because the engraving definitely needs more practice. But I think it came out okay for the pieces that I did engrave. So the first thing I started with was the earrings. Now the earrings are a pretty simple design. So this is basically a triple moon shape that I sawed out, put a bezel cup on it, and threw a golden obsidian in the middle. The stone is pretty tiny and I did struggle with the bezel cups at first. I had a hard time setting them because I made them just ever so slightly too small. But after some work with the metal, I was actually able to set them and they do sit securely, no jostling, no moving. The metal is a little bit thin, but since these are earrings and they're not usually something that would be uh, not worn on your, like your finger or anything, um, it's okay. The metal's a lot thinner. They're more delicate. A little bit sharp. <laughs> a little bit sharp. I have to slightly file them down a little bit more, I think. These will just hang on your ears and they actually came out pretty cool. And I just really love how that golden obsidian looks, especially when certain light hits it. It does go from a uh, deep black to a light golden color. Now the rings were the next two things I made. So the rings were definitely a lot more challenging. So I did make this coffin shaped ring and it has a little ghosty on the back. This one I used a fancy gallery wire. The gallery wire is quite large. Maybe it's a little bit too large, but at the same time, uh, the more I look at the stone, the more I like how it looks. I actually really do like how that gallery wire looks, even though it looked like it was a little bit too large in the beginning. And I did this as a double band design. I wanted something nice, sturdy. It's a larger ring, so I wanted to make sure it's sturdy and when you're wearing it, it won't fall apart or anything. And I really like that little ghosty on the inside. I thought it was super cute. It was actually inspired by a couple different people. I've seen put little designs on the backs of the rings. Sometimes they sweat solder something. Sometimes they cut out something so you can see the crystal through it. It's kind of like a little peekaboo. Sometimes people just engrave stuff on the backs of the rings. With the back plates being so large and some of these larger gemstones, you can do some pretty creative things. The second ring was a moss agate and this was a kite shaped cab cabochon. So this one is much smaller shape. It's a little bit more unique. I still use the gallery wire as the bezel. Gallery wires are pretty easy to work with. They're a little bit fancier looking, but they're also quite malleable until they get work hardened. So they work pretty well. They're very nice and fun to work with. And this one is on a half round ring. So it's very easy 
and very comfortable to wear. But I feel like it gives the nice like little spooky gothic vibes that I was going for with this collection. Now the last two pieces I made were necklaces. So I made two pendants. One is a like scene type pendant. So I've seen these types of pendants on Instagram and Pinterest and I've always wanted to try making my own. People make some really really cool ones. There are some fantastic ones that I've seen people on Instagram make and they make like little shelves and little cupboards and cupboards, cupboards, cupboards cupboards little cupboards that have you know potions and books and crystals and stuff in them or just like potions that have scenes within them they are so cool I don't have that kind of skill level yet so I went for like a simpler design where I cut out a back plate and set a bezel on it and decided I'm gonna pick three elements that I want in this case I did a I did a cat, a cauldron, and a little potion bottle with a tiny little moon sweat soldered to it. And then they are sitting on top of a bloodstone. But overall, I think that actually came out pretty decent. I did the black, set it on like a black background, so it's kind of more like the night sky or like a night dark spooky theme. <laughs> <laughs> night dark spooky background, something of that sort. And then hung it on a silver plated chain. But this is where I got a lot of practice with my sawing because sawing these tiny little elements and then doing a little bit of engraving is definitely not easy. It definitely takes a little bit of time to saw these out, but it was one of those, okay, just slow down and focus on the sawing. And it turned into a very fun, like almost meditative activity of sitting there and sawing. Then the last piece that I made, this was my statement piece for the collection. So I really wanted something spooky, but kind of, you know, that reminds you of almost like vampires and spooky castles and stuff. So I did, I did a spooky castle with bat wings and a larvitite crystal right in the center. Uh, the larvitite crystal has a really, really pretty flash to it and, and the light looks beautiful. Um, this was probably the most challenging piece. I made everything, every single element here is made, including the little tiny bale, which was just a scrap piece of silver that I formed and then soldered. The biggest challenge of this piece was the sweat soldering. Trying to sweat solder larger elements is vastly different than the smaller elements. I discovered it's a completely, almost a completely different way of heating up the piece and making sure the heat stays on that piece correctly. And it was definitely a learning process. I quit the learning curve there for a second. But this piece was extremely frustrating. But again, it was one of those, trust the process, just keep chipping away at it, keep working at it, find a different way to work it and it actually came out really, really good. I'm quite happy with it and I can't wait for it to go up in the Etsy shop and hopefully it finds its forever home. It worked out in the end. So that was the big reason in taking like a full two weeks to actually finish this entire collection. It's only five pieces, but it did take a while and that was because there was times I just got very frustrated with the pieces not going the way I wanted them to, the metal just not forming correctly or solder just not flowing right. Soldering was the biggest challenge in this project and I would just have to walk away for the night. I would do something else because I had to walk away otherwise I was going to scrap the piece and I did not want to scrap it. The cost of silver is a little too much to scrap silver. Now I'm also going to be adding something new. I am combining a part of my laser business with the jewelry portion. So for any of my silver pieces, what I think I'm going to offer is a little jewelry box that you can buy them with. So this is a tiny little jewelry box that has a foam insert and it has little tiny magnets and this is going to be like the perfect little keepsake box if you want to give it as a gift or just for yourself. This is obviously cut out with the laser but I stain it and I put it together and I absolutely love putting these things together. They're so much fun. But I thought it makes a cute little gift. This little treasure chest thing will be available as an add-on to any silver projects. I do have my photography background set up behind me so I am gonna do some little photography with my phone first and then with my camera. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process and kind of the thought process and how you just really have to trust the process because these pieces did not look anything like I thought they were going to. In the middle of it, they actually looked terrible and I thought they were all gonna get scrapped. And I'm a newbie and I'm like, I went way above my skill level for this, but in the end, it kind of worked out really well. I still kind of managed to make stuff that I am quite happy with it. I'm actually quite proud of them. And now they're gonna go up in the Etsy shop. Um, hopefully they will find some new homes 
pretty quickly, especially in time for Halloween. So if you like seeing this kind of content, if you like seeing the silversmithing journey and the electroforming videos and tutorials and everything that I do there too, don't forget to hit that like button, click the subscribe and ring that notification bell. I'll see you at the next one.